We're coming up on Lionel Island. So much for the ghost ships. Should we expect another welcome party waiting for us again? No. I had the Blood Wings spread a rumor that we were raiding an Abbey compound far, far from here. As far as plans go, that's better than nothing. <laughs> All this cloak and dagger. Give me a good old frontal assault any day. First mate, sir. There's a ship drifting ahead of us. A ghost ship? It's an Abbey ship. Their flag. It's a distress signal. Understood. Commence approach. Are you actually going to help an enemy ship? A ship signaling distress has neither allies nor enemies. That's a code all seafarers abide by. It's an obvious trap. Not even pirates would use a distress signal for a surprise attack. Of course, after we rescue a ship, we still strip them of everything they've got. Anyway, if it's a trap, we'll kill everyone on board. Simple. <sighs> a waste of time if you ask me. Benwick, do we still have any Salatoma left? Yes, sir. If this is their full crew, we should have enough on board to treat them. Now that you mention it, don't Abbey ships usually have a bigger crew? These were all who were aboard when I hijacked the ship and made them set sail. Teresa! I knew I was being reckless. But I never expected we'd run afoul of the Corsair Scourge. But you know, I'm glad we did. Since it brought me to you. You seriously plan to fight in that condition? No, no. I know you've won this one. Use me as you will. Use you? Don't bother asking. It's a trap. Lionel Island is where you'll find Dees. Hatharian. My brother Oscar is guarding over it. We can handle him just fine. You should know that Oscar's acquired a powerful new art. Its formula developed by Lord Melchior. The art heightens a Moloch's power far beyond its normal limits. The effect is incredible. Normal arts don't even compare. Even were you to win, you wouldn't come away unscathed. Why are you telling us this? The art is still untested and imperfect. There's no guarantee its caster will survive the effects. I don't want anything to happen to Oscar. If I'm your hostage, Oscar won't move against you. This will afford you a window to snatch the Therian and make your escape. You're willing to betray the Abbey? There's nothing in this world that could ever replace Oscar. <sighs> I know you can't trust me. So don't give me your medicine. I'll place my life in your hands. Just save Oscar. Lady Teresa! If true, this information will be of use to us. For now, let's bring her aboard and give her the medicine. You're going to believe her story? An art that boosts a Moloch's power far beyond its normal limits. <sighs> Sounds like we might be in for a real fight. And she said that Melchior developed it, too. Maybe this explains why he was so intent on acquiring that Siegfried relic. If this is all true, 
A frontal assault might not be the best idea. But why do you think Teresa is willing to go so far to protect Oscar? Oscar is the second son of the Dragonia family, aristocrats with ancestral ties to the Asgard royal lineage. From what I understand, he was sent to the Abbey in the hopes of strengthening his family's ties to the group. For the good of the bloodline. Happens all the time. Teresa followed him to the Abbey, where she's been his constant savior, even if she's kept it from him. So she's another noble too. Could have had an easy life if she'd just kept in her place. No, Teresa was conceived, uh, outside of formal matrimony, and her mother was not of what you'd call high standing. It happens more often than you might think. My mother died, and my father's wife never cared for me. So I merely served the Dragonia family as a maid. Those were dark, lonely times for me. But Oscar... Oscar was the only one who called me his sister, and embraced me as family. Does a sister need any other reason to want to save her brother? So you're back on your feet. My sincere thanks for the medicine. I can't use you as a hostage if you're dead. Where's the Therian? Ahead through the Baird Marsh are the ruins of an ancient kingdom. There you'll find the Earth Pulse Point, along with Oscar. Um, what happened to number one? Lord Artorius took number one away from me. As it stands, I'm without the powers of an exorcist. As such, whether I live or die is for you people to decide. Once Oscar is safe, you can do whatever you like to me. We'll do as you wish. All of it. I know you know this, Fee. But don't let your guard down for one second. I won't. Teresa, it's been a while. We haven't seen each other since the throne. Not when I keep hearing so much about you. Eleanor Hume, the traitor. What of the Corsair Scourge? Nothing to worry about. I've had my dose of Salatoma. Was it as bad as you remembered it? Why did you betray us, Eleanor? When the Abbey made you a patrolling inspector, they placed great responsibility upon you. Oscar should have been the one to take on that role. He had already been selected for it. But you wanted it so very badly, and that sweet, naive man that he is, he let you take it. I had no idea. Oscar had already been chosen? Yes, and after he passed on it, he was stationed on that dangerous island where he sustained that awful wound. And now, you accompany the monster that nearly killed him. My desire to save humanity has not changed. I have simply found a path different from the Abbey's. I don't find that answer acceptable. I didn't think that you would. I know very well that you offer no compromises when it comes to Oscar. You're right. I don't. Be sure to inform your new friends of that fact. In order for me to protect Oscar, I'm going to need you all to trust me. That's all I have to say to you. I understand.
power number two displayed at the throne. Hard to believe he had that hidden in him. Lord Melchior said that number one was full of untapped potential as well. If I have the talent to use it. Uh, Teresa, my lady, you seem angry. Me? At what? At me, for running away and joining Velvet. Oh, that? I was careless. An enemy stole a tool of mine. I'm merely frustrated at my own incompetence. A tool? I don't care what happens to me now. Not as long as I can save Oscar. I'm the one who hurt your precious brother. And you're asking for my help now? Yes, you hurt him. You scarred his face, and his honor, and his heart. Still holding a grudge then? With no Malachim, I'm an ordinary woman. How could I threaten the Lord of Calamity? I'm painfully aware of my own weakness. Good. Try to keep out of the way then. Lady Teresa, Velvet isn't so different from you. She had a little brother, she... I know all about the Lord of Calamity, but none of that matters to me. As powerless as I am now, this is the only path for me. It's the only way I can save Oscar. Lady Teresa... Malakim are just tools. What are you brooding over? I know! Velvet, Eleanor, or Teresa? You're not sure whose little brother you want to be, eh? In that case, I assure you I'm the kindest of the lot. The cruelest, most devious. That's not what's on my mind. There's something I need to say to Lady Teresa. Something you wish to say? Then speak, number two. That's just it. I'm not number two. I'm... I'm Lafayette. Lafayette? It's the name Velvet gave me. It's very important to me. Something can be important to you? Yes. I have feelings. You see, Malakim are not tools. Very well. I shall call you Lafayette from now on. Thank you, Lady Teresa. You're kinder than you look, my dear Teresa. Thank you, Teresa. You misunderstand. With so much at stake, I don't want to rock the boat.
It's a beetle. Yeah. Uh, a Lionel Giant Thunderstag beetle, to be exact. Why do they always have such awkward names? I... I think it's a cool name. <sighs> I've never been able to figure out why boys are so drawn to these things. Huh? What's the matter? Didn't you want to see it? Uh, yeah. Thanks. When he was little, Oscar was always running around the woods collecting bugs. He'd get so into it, it was never long before he'd trip and hurt himself. Did you grab bugs for him? Yes, I thought they were gross. But I was much taller than him, and I had the reach. Once, he gave me a whole pile of cicada shells as his way of thanking me. I just screamed. I'm sure he just wanted you to know how he felt. I can relate to that. Rather unusual for a Moloch like you to contemplate such things. Well, I try to. It's just really hard sometimes. It's hard for people too. Sometimes it feels insurmountable. And yet we can't give up. Sometimes you just have to say what you believe in your heart. Even if you're not good at saying it. What I believe. V, hurry up already! What were you two talking about? Nothing. You said found a new stag beetle, did you? Yeah, Lady Teresa caught it for me. Ooh, those pincers are sharp. Eisen, take a look at this fine specimen of a stag. Wait, I believe that might be a two horned rhinoceros beetle. Listen, you two, if you're gonna get in another fight over this, I'll just say it's a new type of drone beetle. You wouldn't. You've really figured us out, huh? <laughs> Eleanor, you didn't make him say that just now, did you? I did not. I've made a pact with him as a vessel, but he isn't tethered to me. A Moloch, acting so human. I used to think that way. Malachim possessing free will just like humans? It was inconceivable. But meeting Lafayette and Aizen taught me the truth. They laugh in joyful times and cry in sad times. Their stomachs even growl too. Their stomachs growl? Now I take it as a matter of course that not only Malachim, but demons and Therians, too, have their own thoughts and feelings. I thought you hated demons. I certainly still do, but now I feel something besides just hate. Malachim with free will? Demons and Therians as well? You must have sensed that in Lafayette, said, or you wouldn't have caught that beetle for him. When you saw his beaming face, it must have reminded you of when Oscar was a young boy. Am I correct? This conversation's over. Teresa, be honest. Isn't there something wrong with the Abbey using a dangerous experimental art out in the field? Oscar's the one who decided to go through with it. Don't presume to know anything about who he is. Using that art could be fatal. I can't allow Oscar to try it. Lady Teresa, is something the matter? It's nothing. I'm fine. But you looked like you were in pain. Oh. I was just thinking a bit. You didn't have time to rest after recovering from the Corsair's Scourge. You're awfully hard on yourself, you know. 
And even harder on others, am I? Th that's not what I meant! It doesn't matter. I'm well aware that I'm stone cold. But they say a Moloch never knows his vessel's heart. I said nothing all those times you snuck off to the library, did I? You knew about that? Of course I knew. But I was just letting you roam free like a master might let her little pup. Number one didn't wander about like you did. What makes you different? I'm sorry. Well, boys will be boys, I guess. But I was planning on punishing you if that behavior continued. Punish me how? You don't want to know. It might wreck your good cheer. Lady Teresa! <laughs> Look at how open she's being. Do you really think she'll work with us? I don't think she's lying to us. But I don't think she's being entirely truthful either. Look, I know I probably don't have to say this, but... You don't. I won't let my guard down. If I see anything funny, she's dead.